we shall be uh, talking about quantum Hall effect in graphene. Um, uh, as I told you that uh, it will serve uh, two uh, sort of uh, purpose. One of them is uh, uh, doing um, the quantum Hall effect or rather rewinding the story of quantum Hall effect in a crystal lattice structure. Uh, we have uh, seen that uh, in a square lattice uh, how magnetic field enters into the problem uh, and now we will see it for graphene. Uh, one of the more uh, important things in this context is that uh, in a square lattice the dispersion is uh, uh, the low energy uh, or rather the long wavelength dispersion is uh, that of a k square type uh, whereas here uh, it is a, a relativistic dispersion which we call it a pseudo relativistic. And in order to uh, do that we will have to uh, know the electronic structure of uh, graphene. Uh, and uh, so, our uh, first uh, sort of activity would be understanding the electronic structure uh, particularly the uh, low energy dispersion of graphene. Just wanted to remind you that uh, there are different allotropes of uh, carbon, uh, graphene is one of them and um, uh, some of the allotropes such as uh, uh, diamond, uh, diamond was known for a very long time I mean. Uh, 4000 BC. So, that is even before Christ and um, the uh, graphite which is a well known form of uh, carbon. Uh, this is basically what you find in your pencil tips. So, this is discovered in uh, 16th century. Um, then there are other allotropes such as carbon 60 which is uh, called as a buckyball. So, this was in 1985 and single wall carbon nanotube ok. So, it is a nanotube form was there in 1991. Uh, initially it was I think, uh, so 1991 was, uh, so this is a multi walled carbon nanotube. So, this was in 1991 then single walled carbon nanotube was in 1993. So, these are like one dimensional structure C60 is like a 0 dimensional structure and uh, graphene was there in at the end around 2004-2005 ok. So, uh, this is how the history unfolded of uh, carbon and its allotropes. Okay. So, let us go to study graphene and um, so this structure has already been told to you that uh, this is the structure where uh, these open atoms uh, that you see here. So, there is an open atom and then there is a closed atom there ok. So, uh, each uh, open atom and closed atom would be called as A and B atoms or A and B sub lattices. Uh, there is uh, the sub lattice actually contains these two atoms. So, the unit cell uh, has these two atoms um, and this is the Brillouin zone. So, if you have a flat top uh, just like what you see here, like here there is a flat top. So, this uh, will have a hexagon with um, of this shape and if you have the real space of this shape that is uh, of this the momentum space structure that you see here. If the real space atoms are arranged in this fashion then the momentum space would be like what the real space looks like. So, the important thing is that uh, in a real space you have a honeycomb structure and uh, also in the momentum space you have a honeycomb structure. Uh, these uh, A1 and A2 are called as the unit cell vectors or the primitive lattice vectors and B1 and B2 are called as a reciprocal lattice vectors and uh, these uh, there are some points in the Brillouin zone that are shown here on the right picture where you see a gamma point and then there are k and k prime points and then there is a m point and so on. These are quite important as uh, the subsequent discussions will show and um, so this A1 and A2 are the primitive uh, lattice vectors or uh, these unit cells are given by these A1 and A2. So, uh, let me write down the nearest neighbor vectors ok. So, each B atom has a nearest neighbor as A atoms as you can see. So, this is the A atom here, there is one A atom here, there is one A atom here and hence the three nearest neighbors which we will write it with a delta 1 
which is uh, a by 2 uh, root over 3 uh, x cap plus uh, y cap. Uh, so, this is delta 1 which is uh, this one which you see it here. Uh, let us call it as uh, some point say p and a p prime and a p double prime. So, uh, delta 1 connects uh, the b atom to p point and uh, similarly one can write down the delta 2 which is a by 2 it is a minus uh, root 3 x and uh, plus y. The, uh, so, one can put actually a plus root 3 x and a minus <coughs> y because uh, it is uh, below that and uh, then the, the last one is actually a delta 3 which is equal to a minus a x cap that is at the point. So, at p, at p prime and at p double prime ok. And uh, we can write down the a 1 and a 2 vectors as a 1 equal to a by 2 uh, root over 3 x cap plus 3 y cap and a 2 equal to a by 2 root 3 uh, x cap minus 3 y cap and uh, similarly the b 1 which are the reciprocal lattice vectors can be written as 2 pi over 3 a um, and root 3 uh, k x cap plus k y cap and b 2 would be 2 pi over 3 a and root 3 k x minus k y cap ok. Now, these are all the vectors uh, that are important for our discussion and uh, any point um, on the lattice can be or any uh, position of any of the atoms can be obtained by doing this that is uh, a 2 uh, where n and m are integers and a 1 a 2 are shown here ok. So, n m are integers. So, this is again the thing shown in color. So, these a and b uh, just for your benefit are shown as blue and uh, red atoms and then uh, the brilliant zone is shown ok. All right, we will come to this discussion in just a while ok. So, let me write down the tight binding dispersion and the tight binding dispersion is uh, say written as uh, so the Hamiltonian and the Hamiltonian is uh, first let us write it in the real space uh, which uh, is the nearest neighbor hopping. So, each carbon atom has uh, one electron per atom. So, it is uh, like a half filled system where the entire uh, valence band is filled ok. So, uh, this is like a A i uh, sigma dagger B j sigma uh, plus a Hermitian conjugate of that and sigma. So, I am using the second quantized notation where a i sigma creates an electron with spin sigma at the ith site uh, which belongs to the a sub lattice and um, uh, it destroys an electron with spin sigma at the jth site in b sub lattice. And uh, just to make sure that these uh, i and j are nearest neighbors there is a angular bracket that is uh, shown and this sigma actually denotes the spin of the electrons. However, uh, the spin here carries no meaning. So, in the subsequent discussions the spin will be dropped. Uh, will only include spin uh, as and when it is needed uh, that is uh, when there is a spin orbit coupling that is present. So, uh, we write down this uh, a little more elaborately and uh, so this is a minus t uh, that is the tight binding Hamiltonian we are doing and why we are doing a tight binding Hamiltonian because uh, this uh, t is uh, of the uh, order of 2.7 electron volt which is very large and also that each carbon atom has one uh, electron. So, the interaction between the electrons is completely neglected. So, we write it as r and delta and uh, this is like I am writing it slightly differently, but they mean the same thing delta i where delta i's are those nearest neighbor. Uh, this is a generic form for any tight binding Hamiltonian 
Uh, now I am writing it for graphene. So, that is why we are using these delta i's uh, delta 1, delta 2, delta 3 are defined earlier. And uh, so, this is equal to A of r where r is as I said is a, a general point which connects uh, any atom uh, starting from some chosen origin. So, this is A dagger r uh, b r plus delta i. Uh, these are all vectors. So, this is a Hermitian conjugate and uh, a Hamiltonian needs a Hermitian conjugate to be considered uh, as real. That means, uh, for the Hermeticity of the Hamiltonian so that it uh, gives real eigenvalues, you need to add the Hermitian conjugate. So, this is basically the Hermitian conjugate and again uh, in keeping with the notation that we have talked about earlier that is a B, a B dagger will create an electron. Uh, at the B site uh, with uh, a B sub lattice with the site R plus delta I and uh, A R will uh, annihilate an electron uh, at site R belonging to the A sub lattice. And uh, just to make sure that each A sub lattice has a neighbor as the B sub lattice and vice versa. Okay? And uh, th there is a sum over all these delta I and there are three neighbors as we have said. Okay. So, now uh, because this Hamiltonian has translational invariance, we can do a Fourier transform. And why I mention about translational invariance because k is a good quantum number or k is a conserved quantity which can be used to uh, denote the basis uh, for the problem. So, a k is equal to now these are all uh, vectors sometimes i would not write them as vectors but they are all uh, vectors so this is a uh, a of r so this k is a vector r is a vector and e to the power minus i k dot r okay and you have a sum over r so if you do that so there are uh, these hamiltonian takes the form minus t over n because uh, this uh, root over of n, th this n denotes the number of sites. So, this is equal to, now there are, you are multiplying two operators here, b and a. So, they will come with different wave vectors, uh, maybe k and k prime or let us see uh, what we use here. So, we use a k and a q uh, and of course, there is a r uh, which is coming from the, uh, this Fourier transform and then delta i where uh, you know i is equal to 1, 2 and 3. Okay? So, with that, uh, so we have a exponential i uh, k minus q uh, dot r. Now, remember uh, because there is a dagger there. So, if you want to write a dagger, so a k dagger will come with a 1 by root n exactly everything re remains same excepting that you have a a dagger r and exponential i k dot r. Okay? Uh, and these are column vectors, each of these vectors uh, a and b because they are column vectors when you write them you have to use different notations otherwise it will mean that you are using only the like terms like a1, b1, a2, b2 and so on uh, because they are not simply just uh, algebraic quantities they involve a column vector. Okay? So, the first term is that and then uh, exponential i q dot delta i these uh, and then b q dagger a k. So, we can write it down here as plus uh, exponential uh, i k minus q dot r exponential minus i q dot delta i and uh, a q dagger b k. Okay. So, that is the two terms that we have written above and um, now a little bit of simplification will have to be done. But now uh, notice one thing that the definition of the Kronecker delta which is usually written as delta k q this is equal to 1 by n uh, summation over r and it is a exponential k minus q dot r. Okay. Uh, so, you see that there is a sum over r and then there are these uh, exponential factors which are there and these exponential factors will give you nothing but just the Kronecker delta which means that 
uh, it will make k and q to be same and um, with that what one gets is the following. So, the Hamiltonian is written as uh, minus t sum over k and then these delta i's will go from 1 to 3 which we have said and there is a minus k dot because k and q have become same. So, it is i k dot delta i p k dagger a k and a plus exponential i k dot delta i a k dagger a k dagger b k. This you need to do it once uh, in order to get used to this and then uh, we can write this as uh, minus t then there is a sum over k and uh, you again have this delta i equal to 1, 2, 3 and I can write it just like a matrix where a k dagger uh, b k dagger. Uh, so, this is like a row vector and uh, uh, this is a 0 and exponential minus i k dot delta i exponential i k dot delta i and then 0 and then you have a a k and a b k. Okay. Now, you see that there is no term that uh, contains a a k dagger a k because there is no hopping from uh, a uh, atom to a atom. So, it is the hopping is between a atom to b atom because we are talking about nearest neighbor model, nearest neighbor tight binding model. Similarly, there is no term which is b k dagger b k that is why this matrix that you see uh, at the middle sandwich between the row vector and the column vector actually does not uh, have any diagonal elements, but it only has off diagonal elements. So, this can be written as a sum over k and again a delta i equal to I may forget these vectors, but please put it. So, this is a k dagger b k dagger and then let us write this as h k and a k b k that is your Hamiltonian and uh, what is the form of h k. Now, h k involves a sum of three terms with the delta 1 and delta 2 and delta 3 that we have mentioned earlier that is uh, delta 1, delta 2 and delta 3 which are written here. Okay. So, once when you put that then h k becomes a sum of three terms. Uh, let me also take this minus t here so that I do not write the minus t here. So, I take it with h k so that this becomes like uh, a 0 exponential uh, uh, i k dot delta 1 plus uh, exponential i k dot delta 2 plus exponential i k dot delta 3. Okay. And uh, so, and then uh, there will be a term like the similar kind of term but with the Hermitian conjugate. So, it is a minus i k dot delta 1 plus exponential minus i k dot delta 2 plus exponential minus i k dot delta 3 uh, and this and a 0 here. And uh, if we want to diagonalize this, we just have to find the eigenvalues of this matrix H of k. Okay. Now, the difference between this delta 1 and delta 2 or delta 2 and delta 3 or delta 1 and delta 3 must uh, give you a lattice vector uh, which is r. So, one can do a, in order to you know achieve a more simplification one can do a transformation of uh, like a k can be uh, changed to e to the power i k dot delta 3 a k and a k dagger will be uh, exponential minus i k dot delta 3 and uh, a k dagger. Okay. This is not required, but if you make this then uh, at one term becomes equal to 1 and that is what is uh, intended here. So, we will write this h k, but now because we made this uh, transformation let us write it with a h tilde, it is equal to minus t and uh, 0 here and uh, exponential i k uh, delta 1 minus delta 3 plus exponential i k delta 2 minus delta 3 
uh, and plus 1 and then you have a so this is a term there and then uh, one can actually have uh, exponential minus i k delta 1 minus delta 3 plus uh, exponential minus i k uh, delta 2 minus delta 3 plus 1 and there is a 0 here and that becomes the matrix. If we use the definitions of uh, delta 1 and delta 2, so you see now that uh, one term has become equal to 1. Uh, just for uh, the simplicity now we put delta 1 and delta 2 and delta 3 and then one gets this h of k to be rather h tilde of k to be minus t and it is a 0 exponential i k dot uh, a 1 plus exponential i k dot a 2 i k dot a 2 and a plus 1 and there is a minus uh, there is a minus sign minus i k dot a 1 plus exponential minus i k dot a 2 plus a 1 and uh, this is a 0. So, this is one term and the off diagonal term there and now uh, one can actually verify that um, this h tilde obeys this uh, equal to h tilde k plus g where g is the proper reciprocal lattice vector which is defined as uh, so this is defined as p of b1 plus q of b2 and again uh, p q all right so uh, this is the form and then uh, let's write a little more neatly where uh, we write this as minus t uh, 0 f of k and f star of k and 0 where f of k is equal to this is just the simplified form uh, of this 2 by 2 matrix where this is equal to minus t uh, exponential minus i k x a uh, plus 2 exponential i k x a by 2 and a cosine of k y root 3 k y root 3 a by 2 ok. That is the uh, form for f of k and uh, we can uh, now diagonalize this matrix h tilde of k and get the energy dispersion for uh, the tight binding problem of for graphene. So, this is equal to plus minus t uh, root over of f k uh, mod square and this is equal to plus minus t uh, and 3 plus 2 cosine root over 3 a k y plus 4 cos uh, root 3 uh, k y a by 2 and a cosine 3 a k x by 2. Ideally this should have been the end of the problem because uh, we have found out there are two bands one correspond to plus sign and the other, other correspond to minus sign and uh, there are two bands because there are two atoms per unit cell. So, it is like a diatomic lattice and that is why there are two bands we have seen this in uh, while doing the phonons or the crystal vibrations monoatomic at, uh, lattice would give rise to one band and diatomic would give rise to two. And if you have more atoms per unit cell such as a Kagome lattice, you will have three bands etcetera. So, uh, this is the dispersion kx and ky both go from minus pi to pi in the Brillouin zone and uh, <coughs> one can actually plot this dispersion and uh, one gets the uh, how the bands look like. And when we do that, uh, let me show you the pictures. So, this is the picture of the bands. You see there are two bands. So, this is the top band which is called as a conduction band and this is known as a valence band. However, they are not separated. You see that there are these points which are denoted by white and black dots here and they are touching at the six points on the Fermi sheet. 
So this is the Fermi sheet or you can call it epsilon f equal to 0 or if suppose the chemical potential is fixed there, then uh, these bands, two bands just barely touch at these six points and not only that they touch, they touch like a light cone as is shown here. You see that this is like a light cone, so it is like a linear dispersion and linear dispersion is equated to the behavior of photons. Okay, so, photons have a behavior which is like, which is PC, which is like a extreme relativistic limit of a particle or you can call it a massless particle. So, that is why the electrons in graphene, they show character of a massless Dirac fermions. Okay. So, this word is very common. And uh, why are they called as uh, massless Dirac fermions? Let me uh, tell you that the Dirac equation is written as uh, this is equal to uh, C alpha dot P plus beta M C square, uh, where alpha and beta are matrices and P is the momentum and um, uh, M C square is the energy, the rest mass energy and C is the speed of light. However, this uh, dispersion that we will see in a while looks like only this term being present and this term is absent and that is why it is called a massless and why it is called a Dirac because it is uh, you can see that the energy is linear in P or K as it is shown here uh, because uh, so this is the the conical dispersion that you see there. It has been also seen in experiments uh, angular resolved photo emission spectroscopy shows this uh, formation of Dirac cones. Okay. Now, uh, we need to understand because condensed matter physics uh, deals with low energy properties of systems, we need to understand that what is the low energy property for this uh, particular Hamiltonian. And in order to understand that, before we go there, let me show you a colored picture of this. Again, you see that uh, this is the energy uh, plotted in E v and there is a k x and a k y and so on. And then uh, these uh, red colored uh, red and yellowish that corresponds to uh, the conduction band and then blue and uh, greenish tinge that corresponds to valence band. Okay? And we have said that uh, it is one electron per site per carbon atom. So, it is half filled which means that all the uh, states in the valence band is full. Now, we need to find uh, the Dirac point so that uh, we can expand the energy which we have just obtained about those Dirac points. Uh, I told you why they are called Dirac points because the dispersion is that of a ultra relativistic or a massless relativistic particle and that is why they are called Dirac. So, there is no uh, scale, uh, the velocity scale here. Uh, is uh, only the uh, fermionic velocity at the Fermi level, uh, not the velocity of light. So, the fermionic velocity is uh, typically about three orders of magnitude lower. So, that is why it is called as massless Dirac fermions, uh, but they are called pseudo massless uh, fermions, that is uh, the pseudo uh, Dirac fermions or pseudo relativistic uh, fermions. Okay. So, uh, you know how now the dispersion looks like uh, and so on and then uh, let us find out the Dirac points and that is not too difficult. What you can do is that uh, you can uh, put the real part and imaginary part of this uh, dispersion equal to 0. Uh, here of course, you do not see that you go to this, uh, this f of k which has real part and an imaginary part and you put uh, them separately to be equal to 0 because you want to see where it meets epsilon equal to 0 which is the Fermi energy or the Fermi uh, sheet or the chemical potential. So, we will put these uh, f of k equal to 0 to find out uh, what are the coordinates of k x and k y for which the dispersion vanishes okay? and uh, that can be found out easily. If you do that exercise of putting the uh, real and imaginary parts to be equal to 0. So, let me write down this as finding the Dirac points, that is the exercise. Okay. 
So, putting uh, the real and imaginary parts Okay, we get two equations, one from the real part, one from the imaginary part and uh, let us uh, write down these equations as uh, you can check them. So, it is uh, cos k x a by 2 cos uh, root 3 k y a by 2 uh, equal to 0 and uh, minus sin k x a plus 2 sin k x a by 2 cos root 3 k y a by 2 equal to 0. So, this uh, one of them uh, is from the real part the top one and uh, the bottom one is from the imaginary part putting that equal to 0. And I hope I have been able to communicate why I am putting them equal to 0 because I want to see these points of touching which I have shown here that these points these red circle points are what I am trying to determine and because uh, the dispersion uh, gives you a 0 value. So, that is why the f of k has to be it has to vanish and from those conditions uh, we have found out these two equations. And uh, the so, if you manipulate uh, the first one then what you get is so, from 1 it is sin uh, k x a by 2 and a minus cos k x a by 2 plus a cos k y a root 3 by 2 uh, this is equal to 0. So, that is from 1 we get from this let us call this as 3 and uh, we are left with two options in which there is a product of these two terms equal to 0 which means either the sin k x a by 2 is 0 or these bracketed square bracket is 0 okay? and we will see both of them separately. So, uh, one of them gives uh, so option 1 is uh, let us call them as option option 1 it is sin k x a by 2 equal to 0 which also means that uh, cosine of k x a by 2 is either plus 1 or minus 1. Okay? Uh, so, sin vanishes and cosine uh, just either phase leads or phase lags. So, that is why it is uh, plus or minus 1 or uh, option 2 is uh, when the uh, bracket is equal to 0 which means that uh, cosine k x a by 2 equal to cosine k y a root 3 by 2. So, <laughs> this is equal to uh, cosine k x a by 2 and equal to cosine root 3 k y a by 2. Okay? So, uh, we look at option 1. So, let us write it as equation number 4 and equation number 5. So, from equation 4 what one gets is uh, we get a condition that uh, 1 plus uh, 2 cosine k y root 3 uh, a is equal to 0. Option 1 gives this uh, equal to 0 and then uh, what you can do is that you can um, uh, this gives a, a position of the points as uh, so these are the points which are 0 plus minus 4 pi by 3 root 3 a. Uh, so, these are the so this k x and these are k y. So, I get two points 0 and uh, 4 pi uh, by 3 root 3 a another is 0 minus 4 pi by 3 root 3 a these are the two points that we get uh, from uh, these option 1 and from option 2 we get uh, from equation 5 uh, one gets uh, the other option which is equal to the cosine of uh, k y a root 3 which is plus a 2 cosine square k y a root 3 by 2. So, uh, where we have used uh, this equation uh, that we get from here. So, we have used 6 and 7 I mean we have used uh, 6 here and then we get um, uh, 4 more points from this equation and these points are plus minus 2 pi by 3 a 
1 and a 1 by root 3 and plus minus 2 pi by 3 a 1 minus 1 by root 3. Okay. So, uh, we get 2 points here and 4 points it's like 2 more points here and 2 more points here. So, that becomes 6 points. So, 2 points, 2 Dirac points this is 2 Dirac points and these are 2 more Dirac points. So, that makes it 6 Dirac points which is what we have seen in the dispersion. Okay. So, we have these 6 uh, Dirac points however, uh, it can actually be checked that the all the 6 points are not independent. In fact, uh, there are relationships such as uh, the let us take the first one with a positive sign and uh, these 3 root 3 a uh, plus a b 2 b 2 has been defined earlier if you see that b 2 has been defined here here b b 1 and b 2. So, once you add b 1 or b 2 to this uh, the first point you get a one other uh, Dirac point which is 1 minus 1 by root 3 which is here, here the plus 1 with a minus sign inside and so on uh, between them. Okay. So, this is 1 and uh, we have a 0 uh, 4 pi by 3 root 3 a, a plus or minus a b 1 that gives another 1 which is 2 pi by 3 a uh, minus 1 minus 1 by root 3. Okay. So, these are the two relations. So, that cut down uh, the relationship or rather the independent Dirac points and there are other relations that uh, connect the other two Dirac points. So, we are left with only two independent Dirac points. and these are called as k and k prime. Okay. They are also referred to as valleys. Now, whenever I write it a big k and a k prime, they mean uh, the Dirac points that we are referring to. So, they are two independent Dirac points and uh, they can be anything, but uh, what is usually done is that uh, you can write it down as 2 pi by 3 a uh, 1 1 by root 3 and the k prime is equal to 2 pi by 3 a 1 minus 1 by root 3. Okay. So, these are uh, the ch usual choices, but it does not matter you can have other choices as well that is you can work with any two of them uh, the other four become dependent on these two and uh, they also refer to as valleys as I told. So, these are the k and k prime points that you have seen earlier in that dispersion you see here. So, there is a k point here and a k prime point in between that is called as a m point, the center of the Prilouin zone is called as a gamma point and so on. Okay. So, at these points one has a massless uh, Dirac kind of dispersion for the electrons uh, of graphene. Okay. Now, since we have found these uh, points, the Dirac points, uh, we can expand the electronic dispersion about these uh, points. Okay. And uh, when we do that, so what we have to do is uh, we uh, now get the low energy dispersion. And uh, in order to do that, what we do is uh, we basically uh, expand f of k about a k or k prime. In principle, it is uh, we will do it around both. So, uh, let us uh, write down a momentum say q which is equal to k minus k. Okay. Now, this is a momentum variable. Okay. This is runs in the Brillouin zone. This is fixed, this is a Dirac point. 
and this q is actually also a variable but it is a low energy variable because you are expanding the dispersion about the k point. So, we write now f uh, of q and in order to do that uh, let us take the derivative of that that is f prime of q which is a del f uh, k del k x. Uh, so, this is like at the k point and this is like a k x minus a k x. Okay? Uh, this is the x component of the Dirac point uh, in the Brillouin zone and this small k x is actually a variable plus a del f k del k y at the k point and k y minus k y. Okay? So, if you do that then uh, this yields a spectrum which is 3 a t uh, divided by 2 q x plus i q y. Okay? where A is lattice constant which is 1.42 angstrom which we have said earlier. T is of course, the hopping strength, hopping amplitude and uh, these are uh, the wave vectors q x and q y, i is of course, the imaginary number. Uh, this dispersion at k, the low energy dispersion is h cross v f, where v f is the scale uh, and this is equal to q x plus i q y. Now, if you repeat this for the other k point which is k prime at q, this will give a h cross v f and a q x minus i q y, where v f is nothing but 3 a t divided by 2 h cross and uh, this has a value which is like 10 to the power 6 meters per second as opposed to 10 to the power 8 meters per second etcetera for um, that is for the uh, light. So, this is called as a Fermi velocity. Okay. This uh, is very important, this gives the low energy dispersion of graphene. So, if we uh, forget that we have done all this exercise and we want to write down a uh, dispersion uh, for this uh, graphene uh, for the low energy dispersion and we can write it as a k uh, and a k prime just combined is equal to a h cross a v f a q dot sigma where q is a two dimensional wave vector and this sigma is uh, they denote the Pauli matrices. So, this is like sigma x, sigma y and sigma z of course, but sigma z is not important because q itself is a two dimensional vector. So, uh, q couples uh, with sigma. So, this will be like a q x sigma x and q y sigma y. Okay? And uh, it can also be uh, checked that the epsilon at k prime is uh, the epsilon at k uh, and its complex conjugate. So, this uh, two Dirac points the electronic dispersion are related and um, if one uh, just get the scalar form of energy then this is equal to a plus minus h cross v f and a q. So, that explains the dispersion like this which is what we have seen. So, because there is a mod of q, so there is a term that uh, you know it uh, uh, there is a conical kind of dispersion that you get and uh, so it looks like relativistic like photons, but of course, we are not talking about photons, we are talking about electrons and that is why these electrons are called as the massless uh, Dirac electrons or Dirac fermions. Okay. The discussion um, throws up one small anomaly which uh, we want to point out and uh, that anomaly is about the uh, effective mass uh, of uh, electrons.
and the anomaly uh, arises from the fact that uh, this uh, the effective mass is defined as h cross square uh, divided by del 2 uh, epsilon say q del q square okay or you can write it with k k is just a wave vector now you see here uh, the dispersion is linear. So, epsilon q is like uh, h cross v f q or you can uh, neglect this and just say it is linear in q. So, uh, this is a universe of that. Now, this is equal to it will go to 0 because there is no dependence, the, there is no curvature and this will go to 0. So, m star goes to infinity uh, because uh, this inverse of 0 would be infinity. Uh, but that is not true and we are on the other hand we are saying that uh, there are these massless Dirac fermions. So, so how do we actually reconcile um, these uh, definition of the effective mass and what we have just said so far. Okay. For that uh, we have to uh, use a formula m star is equal to h cross square k. Uh, del E del K inverse. So, it is not a double derivative, but it is a single derivative and if you want to understand where it comes from, uh, simple semi classical argument would be good enough. So, we have uh, P is equal to H cross K, which is nothing but the M star into V g, where V g denotes the gro uh, groove velocity. Okay. Uh, so, this V g has a form which is equal to like 1 by h cross uh, del E del k uh, that is the groove velocity and which is uh, obtained from the slope of the dispersion. And if you put it back into this, so let us call this as equation 1. So, 1 apparently throws up a controversy and uh, so we are reconciling that by introducing a new definition and trying to understand whether that new definition holds. So, uh, Vg equal to uh, 1 by h cross del E del k. So, if you put 4 uh, in 3, so your P becomes equal to um, uh, m star by h del E del k uh, and that gives you m star equal to uh, h cross p del e del k inverse um, and if you put p equal to h cross k this becomes h cross square k uh, del e del k inverse. Okay. So, this is the definition that we wish to use and if we use this definition then uh, of course, uh, we get a finite mass uh, of these things uh, because your del E del K, uh, he, here it is of course Q, uh, we have sort of uh, been a little uh, casual in uh, talking about the wave vector, but this Q. So, this is a linear in Q, so we have uh, we can save the definition, it is some uh, finite thing which is uh, related to the electron, uh, I mean uh, which is uh, close to the bare mass of the electron or at least it is related to the bare mass of the electron. So, what we have done so far is uh, we have obtained the low energy dispersion for the electrons in graphene and uh, once we get that now it will be easier for us to talk about quantum Hall effect because this Q or uh, the H cross Q or whatever uh, you want to call as a momentum, this momentum will now get modified or renormalized by this vector potential by this p minus E a and we will put it into this equation and uh, sort of uh, start discussing about Hall effect. There is one thing that uh, one should mention uh, from the uh, dispersion it is clear that it is not a dispersion uh, which is like a, uh, so the q dot sigma tells you that this is like a 2 by 2 Hamiltonian. So, the Hamiltonian is 2 by 2. So, the equations will become 2 by 2 anyway because of this 2 atoms per unit cell or which is uh, denotes the sublattice degree of freedom. Now, if you want to talk about the valleys in addition then it becomes a 4 by 4 problem. And if you want to in, uh, include real spin of electrons then it will become 8 by 8 problem. Okay. Uh, we will um, at least uh, forget about the real spin because in uh, discussing quantum Hall effect there is no need for real spins to be involved which we have discussed at some point of time. 
However, it is important that we talk about at least a 4 by 4 Hamiltonian that is including the two valleys the k and the k prime valleys and uh, including the, the intrinsic degree of freedom uh, that comes along with. This is just one word of caution that I want to uh, talk about here. This sigma does not depend, uh, does not denote the real spin of the electrons. This that is why it is called as a pseudo spinner and it denotes sublattice degree of freedom that is A and B. Okay. So, this uh, really is a very important thing. So, it, the Hamiltonian is 2 by 2 not because of uh, the properties of spin half, but because we are talking about two um, degrees of freedom uh, coming from the sublattices, the two sublattices A and B. That is why it is called as a pseudo spinner, it is not a real uh, spinner. But yes, we may have to include real spin, uh, we will uh, take care of that when we come to this. Thank you.